wow, I didn't know you could have a shield and use a void blast at the same time. Oh, wait, you can't. That's called a hack, and you're now reported, and it's on camera. You use both of them. So you can defend yourself all you want. Report it. What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Is there anything sweeter than after an Iron Banner match getting a message like that? So even though this isn't one of the best matches I've ever played, I thought it was worth showing you guys just to see what the hell was this guy even talking about? I have no idea. I wonder if there were two Titans that looked similar uh, because I am using my Titan in this gameplay. I'm just wondering if he got confused between two Titans. But either way, my name was at the top of the leaderboard, so I took the brunt of his anger, and I got to say, I love it. There is no greater compliment than after a great match getting a message like that, period. I love it. So... I actually wanted to talk about the Iron Banner earlier this week when, frankly, it was a little more relevant. Now the Iron Banner's been gone for a few days, uh, but I definitely wanted to talk about it. Now, I competed a lot in this Iron Banner, this latest Iron Banner, because I wanted the helmets and I want them for all three characters. And I achieved that. I got to rank four on my Hunter, on my Warlock, and on my Titan. And I was really psyched about it because now I have level 32 helmets uh, that don't look as, well as regular as everybody else. Not everybody has the Iron Banner gear, so I look a little bit different when I'm in a raid group or wherever I happen to be, and I'm really excited about that, even though uh, in two short weeks, we're gonna see the House of Wolves get released and everybody's gonna be dressed differently. I'll always have these Iron Banner helmets and the memories that go with them, including this guy sending me voicemails uh, in anger, which I love. So I really think that this latest Iron Banner was kind of the best Iron Banner we've had so far, which makes a lot of sense. Bungie's put a lot of work into the Crucible in general, balancing weapons, taking away special ammo, taking away heavy ammo, you know, making it much more rare. And I think these changes have really made for a better Crucible experience and a better Iron Banner. Uh, the way they have restricted special ammo, so it's just a lot more rare on the map, uh, it's taken away that shotgun blink user, the guy who just ran away with the Fell Winter's Lie as his primary. He was so annoying, he was so hard to counter. You can still do that, but you're only gonna get a few shots doing it. You know, you really have to conserve that special ammo for when, for when you really need it. And I think it's one of the best changes they've made in the Crucible, and I really saw it come into play in this Iron Banner. Primary weapons were much more in play, and I think the primary weapons still need a little bit of work. Auto rifles definitely need a buff. Uh, they're they're just not that useful. I think the Soros Regime is the only one that I really feel like I can get away with. Watch this fail. This is so bad. I just back up. I have a heavy weapon in my hand. That guy had a sliver of life, and I just fall off and let him get away with it. That was awful. That was one of the top ten worst plays I think I've ever had in the Iron Banner. Uh, but yeah, the auto rifles definitely need a buff. That I don't want to see them as powerful as they were, but I'd like to see them kind of come into this happy medium. So they're they're more powerful than they are, so they're actually usable, but I don't want to see them be the most powerful weapons in the Crucible, again, like they were in the past. Thorn, the last word, both of those guns definitely need some attention. And frankly, they're a little bit hard to fix. Thorn is tough right now because it's a two-shot head kill if your damage over time kicks in and kills the guy. And it's a three-shot head kill without that. So I think it should stay a three-shot head kill and maybe be a three-shot body kill with the damage over time component, which can be countered with the red death. I think that's a pretty fair and equal kind of setup. Uh, that way, Hawkmoon would also have an advantage over Thorn. It'd be a two-shot head kill, the Hawkmoon that is, if you get luck in the chamber to proc, which right now, Hawkmoon does more damage per shot and has the potential to be a two-shot head kill, but Thorn is a two-shot head kill because of the damage over time much more frequently, and it's got a faster fire rate. So it's really kind of tough to decide the Hawkmoon is a better gun over Thorn, even though you might like it better. The last word is a little bit tougher. The way that gun is set up, it's just, it's a completely unique gun. Its perks are totally exclusive to it alone, 
But I think what they need to do is to just reduce the range on that gun. It's fine that it kills so fast, but it should only be able to do that in very close encounters. I think that'd be a much more fair setup for that gun. Uh, you know, if it was almost like an SMG in other games where it would kill very quickly up close, but from further distances, you're gonna have a lot of trouble winning gunfights. Right now, last word is good in a lot more situations than I think is really fair. Uh, and I'd just like to see the damage pulled back, and I think it would be fine after that. Other than that, I really, I'm enjoying the Iron Banner right now. I'm enjoying the Crucible right now. I'm really excited to see Trials of Osiris coming out in two weeks. I think that it's gonna be really fun. I think the Crucible is in really good shape for it. You know, there's a couple of things that need to be addressed, but you know, what multiplayer game doesn't have some balance issues right now? With the amount of guns, with the amount of perks that are available in Destiny, I think that Bungie's done a pretty good job. They definitely have some room to improve, but they're on the road to success and they're clearly listening to their community. I also wanted to talk about the Prison of Elders live stream a little bit yesterday. Uh, I found that to be a fairly fascinating live stream, not only because of uh, the content that they were announcing and showing us for the first time publicly, but also for the live stream and how it was presented and kind of the, the failures that they had to overcome in just presenting that content in the manner that they tried to do it. Uh, you know, it was hard. They they were trying very difficult content live uh, with a team that had never played it together. Uh, they had never, some of them had never played it. Uh, others had just never played as a team together. Uh, there were, some of them were focused on entertaining more. Some of them were focused on uh, just kind of explaining what's going on. And they just couldn't get through the content and show off everything that they had planned to show off. It was very apparent that they were trying to get through that last level so they could show off that next phase, which is too bad, right? Because it, it would have been great to see all of the content that they had initially kind of they wanted to show us, uh, but that's okay because when the Prison of Elders comes out, when we get the House of Wolves, you know, we'll be just a little bit more surprised by what we see, which is fine. I think that's uh, that's not a big deal. What we did see, though, I really got excited for. So I was one of those guys. I was a little pissed off. We weren't going to get a raid. You know, my six-man fire team nights. I just had a great raid night last night. We were up till two o'clock in the morning, uh, raiding, having a great time. I'm gonna miss those. Those six-man raids are a lot of fun. You get a lot of fun conversation. Uh, you get a lot of fun personalities all put together. You know, you've, you've actually kind of built relationships at this point with these raid team members. And to find out the Prison Elders is gonna be three-man raid teams only, that's disappointing. But with that being said, I am super stoked that there's gonna be a new type of activity in Destiny. And the Prison of Elders, Looks like it's gonna be really challenging, but really fun. The way it's presented, kind of the arena aspect of it, the way they've included objectives, the way it's gonna be very challenging, the way they've got random modifiers that come in. You know, to me, this all looks like it's just gonna be a, a fun way to play Destiny in a more replayable and repeatable way than just going through like a ROC strike list or you know just replaying the same missions over and over again yeah you'll be playing in the same arena over and over again but things will switch up a little bit you'll get different objectives you'll have different modifiers on you know things will come up in different order all of that stuff is going to be a little different every week that you go in and i think that's really exciting it looks like it's going to be really strategic as well you're going to want to find your best two fire teammates you're going to want to discuss strategy when you hear what the modifier is going to be you'll notice that you kind of you hear what the modifier is going to be you hear who you're fighting before you actually go into the arena you're kind of in that little hub area and that's the perfect opportunity to go into your destiny web app you know pull the weapons that you think might be most useful for this upcoming section uh, maybe switch to uh, a sun singer from a defender or you know whatever whatever is going to be give you the best overall chance of success and discussing that with your raid team i think is going to be really fun and really rewarding and I can't wait to get into it. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. I know I talked about a lot of stuff. I was rambling a little bit, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.